Hey everyone, welcome to today's CNCF On Demand webinar about enabling self-service infrastructure on any cloud with Backstage and Pulumi. I'm really excited for this session. I love everything around Backstage and combining Backstage with Pulumi is really awesome. Now I can give my company, people inside my company, the ability to self-serve them some of the golden paths, some of the best practice infrastructure definitions on any time. They can just come, can fill out and get the infrastructure created. You can even go further and create um, templates for day two operations, which is really awesome. So not only creating a new repository for your microservices or a new uh, EKS cluster or AKS cluster, you can even say, okay, let's update the cluster. Let's create additional nodes. And you guess it, there's much to do. So let me share the slides with you and uh, kick off the session. We have much to cover. So I quickly share my screen and also start with the slides. Okay, so you should see now. Enabling self-service infrastructure on any cloud with Backstage and Pulumi is the title. Shortly to my person, my name is Engel Divi. I'm working as a customer experience architect here at Pulumi. I like everything cloud transformation enablement. I worked in different places, always with the same question, how we get the company up to speed, the company up into the cloud and the teams also enabling them to, to leverage the full potential of what the cloud services offers. So really, really interesting subject. And yes, I love to continuous everything from continuous integration, continuous deployment, you name it. Um, you can follow me on some of the social media. So I'm uh, on X, I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, the most important part, I'm also on GitHub. And there you will find most of my work. Let's go quickly through the agenda before we start. So I want to give you a short introduction about Pulumi and Backstage. What is Pulumi? What is Backstage doing? I find this very interesting to understand further what we present here and uh, how we can marry both technologies together. So the gluing part will be all done with the Pulumi Backstage integration. So this is our Pulumi Backstage plugin. I will go into more detail into this. And then we come to the interesting part to say, okay, how are we going to build backstage software templates? How are we going to build backstage software templates using Pulumi? Very interesting. And then of course, nothing is done without any action and without any moving parts. So I'm going to show a little demo I presented, uh, I think five, four or five um, templates, provisioning different services and you will get a good understanding on how to create your own services. And of course, we're going to wrap up everything. So short introduction about Pulumi. It, it's going to be really, really a short introduction. So uh, what is Pulumi? Pulumi consists of different parts. So we have our build part, deploy part, and manage part. As you can see, Pulumi fits perfectly into your existing tool chain, your existing cloud provider, and your existing uh, IDEs or your existing CI CD system. So on the left side, you can choose from the Pulumi supported languages what you want to use. Yes, we are using uh, a generic programming languages to define your infrastructure. Um, so choose Go when you already use Go for your application code, for example, and then you can also define your infrastructure code in Go. IDE, as I mentioned, Pulumi is not inversive. You can just embed it into everything. We have even colleagues here at the company who use Vim, for example, uh, to create all their code. So everything works. There is no uh, limitation here. And you can leverage the existing tool chains, existing package managers. When you create a Pulumi component, you want to share with your colleagues. The, the, the main part is also our huge provider library. So you can choose not only from the three big ones, AWS, Google, and Azure, um, to create infrastructure. There's also lots more, also smaller cloud providers. So for example, DigitalOcean or Hetzner, uh, you name it, 
you can create different for, on different cloud providers, you can create your infrastructure, but not only infrastructure, you can also provision your SaaS services, you can provision your databases and so on. Very interesting here. And on the right side, of course, um, you can save your uh, your Pulumi programs, your, your, your code in your used uh, source code management tools, for example, Git, GitHub, GitLab, um, you name it. And you can execute this with different parts. You can use uh, Travis, Jenkins, uh, you can use uh, Tekton, you can even use a GitOps approach to um, deploy your applications, to deploy your, your infrastructure. So very interesting and very easy to combine all these pieces in your program. Um, some of the features we will see also in action, but I think it's very interesting to see also uh, a little summary. Yes, uh, most of the clouds, I would even say all the major clouds are presented in the Pulumi uh, provider registry. You can use any of the languages Pulumi is supporting. Pulumi uses a state management to, 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 to save your, your, your state. Um, you can self-host it. We will see this a little bit later. You can self-host this. You can even use the, the free uh, Pulumi cloud service. Secret management is inbuilt, so batteries included, but replaceable. So if you use a different secrets management, for example, Vault or um, Azure Secret Man uh, AWS Secret Manager, feel free to use this one. You get preview plans, as I mentioned, CI, CD integration, webhooks, the REST API, automation API. Very, very interesting parts. Um, yeah, let's head over to the Pulumi high level view. So I found this very interesting to show a little bit about the Pulumi architecture. So as you can see, Pulumi consists of different parts. We have one part is the language shows. This is when you write your codes here. For example, you choose Go, you start to write, you import the Pulumi library. And this is the part which get then executed the moment you say, for example, Pulumi preview or Pulumi app, Pulumi, the Pulumi CLI, let's head over here, takes care to start a service. In this case, the Go service, the Go language server will be uh, started and then communicate with the CLI, translating all the commands, all the, the resource creations in your code into uh, commands for the CLI. The next piece, other providers. This is, for example, when we use AWS, we import the Pulumi AWS provider. We start to code, uh, creating an EKS, for example. When we say again, Pulumi up, Pulumi not only detects now the language, but also which provider and starts also a microservice for this specific provider and then communicates via gRPC calls with the provider to do all the, the, the methods, create, update, delete, you name it. Um, Last but not least, when all the, the commands are created or deleted, what, what you wanted to build in your Pulumi program, the state of this operations gets all saved in the state backend. So there are different ways for the state backend. Yes, you could use, for example, the Pulumi cloud. Uh, you could also self-host this. So for example, if you have an S3 bucket, there are many, many more integrations available. The most common one when people say, hey, I want to host the state on my own is the S3 bucket. So you are completely um, open for this. And yeah, Pulumi, we, we define our resource, the resource gets created, the cloud provider delivers us uh, additional information about the uh, resource which gets created, and then we save the state in the state backend. Next operation, we want to delete, we want to change uh, the number of EKS nodes, for example, we do again a Pulumi app. Now we compare against the state and then do the update, for example, because it's not a new resource anymore. Uh, how does a Pulumi program look like? So a Pulumi program always contains a project. And inside the project, we have our Pulumi program. There is also the Pulumi template file, the Pulumi YAML file, which defines, which says which runtime to use, for example, if you're going to use Python or YAML, it's everything is defined, the name, the description, some of your config parameter. And this is important for the next piece of, uh, of our architecture is the stacks. 
Um, Pulumi defines different uh, types of stacks. Um, you can think about this. I mean, the, the most common thing which people use in terms of stacks is uh, reflecting their, their info, their, their stages. So having a dev stage, having a QA stage or a prod stage, that's the most common way to use stacks. Um, I also saw people using stacks, for example, for ephemeral environments, giving them some um, automated names and then gets created. People do the work, uh, check, for example, yes, that's fine. The, the new EKS settings, for example, they work as we expected. And then the, the ephemeral environments gets destroyed again. But the most common thing is using stacks um, reflecting your, your different in, uh, environments. And here comes also the, the thing, you can now start to override config values, for example. So you can define on a high level, on a program level, you can say, hey, every EKS cluster or AKS cluster has to have six nodes. But then you say, okay, does it make sense in dev? Do I want to save, for example, money or I want to speed up the time to create a new uh, Kubernetes cluster? So you could say, okay, on a dev cluster, for example, we don't need six nodes, or maybe we don't need six nodes with a X large uh, setup. So you can override the machine type. You can override every variable. Now we come to the next part, and this is the, the resources. These are our small building blocks where the magic happens. We can start to say, okay, I want to have, I want to create a VPC. I want to create two different subnets and so on and so on. You can all define like a cooking recipe and all of these resources, they have input and output uh, parameters. And then now you can see, okay, you can take the output from one of the resource as an input of the next resource. So you can say, okay, a VPC, I, I, I always need from a VPC, I need the ID to set, for example, a subnet. So getting out the, the, the variable of the ID, putting into the next resource, and now comes the situation, Pulumi detects this kind of dependencies and creates in the background a dependency graph. And depending on which resource needs the, the output of a resource as an input of the next resource, Pulumi will then say, okay, I'm going to create this resource in parallel. These resources have to wait when it's finished, the other one, to get the value out and put it as an input variable in. So that's the thing. And with this way, you can nicely create the graph and really speed up your deployment because most of the resource, for example, which don't have any dependencies, they just created in parallel and you will get much speed, much quicker um, infrastructure provisioning. Last but not least, every project has on its own the way to define project outputs and project inputs. So you could say, for example, I create a project for the database team. The owner are the database team. They define whatever they need inside. But me as a developer, for example, I just want to know the URL, for example, of my database and the username and the password and all the stuff. So the, the, the infrastructure team. And now we come a little bit back also to the backstage part. So I can just provision, for example, a new database. The code is written from the database team. I don't know what they are doing inside, but what I know is this, this when the project is done, it will give me as an output the database URL or the database password. And there's also an interesting part. We can reference to this. So not only um, you can run the Pulumi program and take the values, copy paste them into your next program or in your config files, um, you can combine two Pulumi programs and say, hey, it's called stack references. Please, Pulumi, look into this specific Pulumi program with the specific stack, for example, the dev stack, and get me out the database URL and the database password. So everything is highly automated, and I don't need to, to copy paste values around different stacks or worst case, communicate via ticket or something like this. So hey, what is the what is the database URL? Okay, so that's it about uh, Pulumi. Of course, there's much, much more and um, the documentation of us is full of, of many, many use cases and many things you can uh, apply. 
But now let's head over to Backstage. What is Backstage? Backstage is an open uh, open platform for building developer portals. That's very important. So it's not Backstage is not a developer platform on its own. It's just a framework, a way to build to build developer portals. It was created by Spotify and it is donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So it's completely free. You can be assured that as part of the foundation, there will be no uh, license changes or something around this. So you can really commit yourself on backstage and start to build your internal developer portal around your um, internal developer platform, for example. Um, I just mentioned this, yes, you get uh, unified tooling for services. You can create a uh, you can create documentation. You can you see who owns which part in the company. Um, so having the way to to model your your whole company inside a, a tool is very very interesting. So you could say, okay, I have for example the LDAP service. Something every company has. Looking up a directory of uh, employees, for example. So I can use backstage now search for a specific component and say, okay, is there a component? Is there something around LDAP, for example, or internal uh, directory? And then I see, hey, there is already a component and these are the owners and it's part of a bigger project. So you can really create the whole relationship of your company, of your different products, of your different development teams inside um, Backstage. So that gives very, very, powerful tool in the hand. And now we see also the free, uh, let me say the, the free bullet points, which uh, collide. So we want to, uh, to increase speed. We want to scale out. So nobody wants to wait for an uh, information of somebody. You don't want to write a ticket or you don't want to write a mail to say, hey, who owns uh, the LDAP service, for example, or how can I consume the LDAP service? And one part, and this is the thing we, we're going to discuss also in this webinar, is uh, you want to contain also the chaos inside your company. So go to your company, tell 10 different teams, hey, create me an EKS cluster, for example, whatever programming language they're using or whatever IAC tools they're using, and you can be sure everybody creates or every team creates a slightly different version. And this is the thing, you get a high fragmentation of different ways, but this is not something you would like. What you want is, okay, you want a deterministic way when, when you say, this is the way we order an EKS cluster or we provision an EKS cluster. It's me who's ordering, or maybe the, the next team is it tomorrow or tonight, you could be all around the world and there will be every time somebody ordering a new piece of infrastructure, you can be assured that they will always get the same way because you create now a specific uh, way to order this. And this highly helps uh, also speed up um, the need for speed. And here we can see what is in the middle. Yes, it's backstage. And when we want to provision our infrastructure, of course, there's also Polumi. Okay. We just uh, talked about this and was creating new uh, new software, completely fine new software, new infrastructure. Um, you have a centralized location to manage everything. Very very cool, and of course, uh, you can explore existing the ex existing ecosystem inside your company. And then this helps also not only the whole inner source movement, but also the way to collaborate. So when you know, for example, who is the team behind the software X, Y, Z you are using to order something or you're using to print out your, your, um, your bills or whatever. Now you can also approach them and say, hey, this is the team, this is the persons inside the team. I can ask them, I can contact them and say, hey, um, can we talk about this, about this new functionality? Or, which is also nice, there's also the, the Git repository connected to in Backstage, for example. So you could go when you have access in a, some kind of a inner source movement that everything is open and visible. You can just um, create a pull request on this code and uh, improve the code, for example. Very, very powerful. 
uh, architectural wise and now this comes also why uh, we're having this webinar uh, you can extend backstage with plugins it's built on a plugin architecture and the pulumi created a plugin around this and that's very very cool um, it's built on material design uh, typescript and react so something um, i would say not uncommon and uh, you should be able to uh, to quickly come into the, the whole backstage code and start to, to 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 change the backstage code for example or extend the backstage functionality to your needs because everything is um, in a fairly standard way written and it should be easy to um, to extend everything i mean i did it and i'm 100 sure that you also be able to change this and to extend backstage to your needs Okay, that's not the same slide. You can see uh, our, our platypus is in the background. So let's talk about the Backstage Pulumi plugin. Okay, the Backstage Pulumi plugin consists of, um, let me put this here, uh, consists of um, two components, two independent components. We have one component is the scaffolder backend module, and the next component is the Backstage plugin itself. Uh, I put the QR code on top of it where you can see the code, where you can uh, have the detailed instruction on how to install the backstage, the Pulumi backstage plugin. Uh, it's also available here, as you can see uh, on Rodi, when you want to use a managed, managed backstage, for example. And as you can see on the left um, icon here, uh, it's also listed in the official backstage plugin catalog. So you can also browse this through and then uh, just click on explore and you will be redirected to the GitHub repository where you see the detailed instruction. Oops, so. Okay, let's have a look into the Pulumi scaffolder backend module. Um, this contains currently as we're speaking of two new actions. So we have the Pulumi new action and the Pulumi up. If you maybe worked with Pulumi, this should be very familiar. You should know about the command. So with the Pulumi new command, you can use templates. So self-created templates um, from your company. You could use the template library Pulumi is offering and you could say, okay, um, create uh, from this template, for example, the EKS Go template, because you want to use Go, um, the Pulumi program, and with the Pulumi up, the second action, you could you then just apply everything and deploy it. So Pulumi new, creating a new project. If you have already a project, you don't need to create the Pulumi new. What you can do then is uh, just call Pulumi up, for example, uh, when you just um, already created this one and uh, it's part of your, your, your scaffolder skeleton or your scaffolder template. We will see this, uh, what I mean in detail. The Pulumi new has many configuration possibilities, so you can uh, define which stack, which Pulumi cloud organization you are using, the name, um, template is very important. Um, let me use the laser pointer to, where are you? Ah, I don't, I don't find this. Okay, so, um, oops, template. Just define, uh, for example, the built-in template name or the URL, it doesn't matter. So just uh, point what you want to use, description, and then you have additional uh, configuration parameter to set config. And if you want to use secret config, so they are automatically uh, encrypted with the Pulumi secret provider, you can just say, okay, secret config, and this um, object is um, the map just um, use them and it will be automatically uh, encrypted. Additional arcs and then of course the folder to run Pulumi in. Next one is the Pulumi app has similar properties, so um, stack organization deployment and so on and so on. Um, very interesting. One part to mention is um, currently you can also use uh, here in the Pulumi app command, uh, Pulumi deployment. So just set the flag, it's uh, you can say it to true or false. If you use true, it's going to use the Pulumi deployment. 
Um, so you don't need to, for example, um, uh, it will not be executed on the on the backstage server, for example. So you you don't need to provide the backstage server all the SDKs of all the languages you're going to support. You don't need to provide, um, for example, different uh, the Go versions uh, or C sharp or something like this. Everything will be executed in the Pulumi cloud. This is really really interesting and highly recommended that you check our documentations about Pulumi deployment, um, as it will help up to avoid any uh, any CI infrastructure. Now, second component of our Pulumi Backstage integration is the Pulumi plugin. Um, the Pulumi plugin currently uh, displays all the information from the Pulumi cloud um, back into your, your, your Pulumi and uh, your Backstage components. So you can see um, which organization it belongs, which programming language is behind this, and so on and so on. Um, and the second part is uh, also um, the Pulumi activity. So when you are navigating inside your component, you can then just see, for example, all the runs you had, and then you can jump from this to the Pulumi cloud. So this is the Pulumi card element in the component overview. As you can see, you see the organization repository, the runtime, and the deep link to the Pulumi console. Second part is um, on a system overview. And again, you can change this when you want to create, you integrate this. For example, I created the, the Pulumi card here on the system because my, my assumption or my modeling is to say, okay, a Pulumi a backstage system corresponds to a, a Pulumi organization. And I want to see all the informations uh, of the whole Pulumi stacks inside a Pulumi organization on a system level. And as you can see, but you can change this if you say, okay, we we want to differently. That's the beauty of Backstage. If you want to use a different way to model your, your Backstage entities, you can change this and then just uh, assign uh, the Pulumi plugin and say, okay, I want to show this maybe on uh, on a resource level. And last is the Pulumi activity view, where you can see uh, when a Pulumi uh, run is executed and then you have all the information here and you don't need, for example, uh, to, to, to jump out of backstage. Okay, that's the, the Pulumi plugin. Uh, let, before we dive into our, into our demo and we will be shortly there with the demo code, um, some words around the Backstage software templates. So software templates are a tool that helps you to create components inside Backstage. Um, and it will execute, um, for example, all your, your, your code you put in your skeleton folder, for example. And you can gather all the, the, the variables. So you have a way to, to, to collect information, to interact with your, with your users, ask them for specific questions. And depending on the input, you then just uh, render different uh, different code and also interesting is okay um, you just don't want to give people now a zip file and say hey here's your your pulumi program or here's your microservice program you can also connect it to to different locations for example github or gitlab azure devops is also supported so you have a way to render the template with the variables and then automatically upload it to your um, to your system to GitHub, for example. Um, writing templates um, templates are stored in the software catalog under the kind the template. You will see this in the demonstration. Templates are written in YAML and uh, contains metadata input. What I just mentioned input and then a list of actions you want to execute. All the scaffolding actions. For example, also with Pulumi. Um, adding a template is also quite straightforward. So you could just go to your, your, your app config YAML, for example, and then you use the, the, the static location configuration. And there are two ways to add the template. You have one is the, the static location configuration, as you can see in the screenshot uh, underneath. Um, this is from my example. Uh, you can also use the catalog uh, import uh, endpoint plugin and um, if you want to, to to bulk import the stuff so there are two ways to import your templates 
Okay, let's head over to our action and see some of the of the code. So some explanation about the demo architecture. So again, I created here a so-called developer platform. It consists of uh, two parts. So we have our GitOps infrastructure. So because now we can use, for example, Flux in conjunction with the Pulumi operator to define um, infrastructure and deliver it via Flux in a GitOps way. There is an example in our demo code for this. And the second part is our backstage infra itself. It will be hosted on Fargate um, using a, an, an elastic container registry and RDS and uh, everything you need to get every, uh, to, to, to host um, backstage. Here in this example, I didn't want to host it on, on, uh, on the Kubernetes itself. You could also, for example, um, deploy it on your Kubernetes and then uh, run it there but I found it more convenient just to use a service. Uh, so there's one thing less to worry about. Um, we're also going to use the Pulumi Cloud because we want to, to upload our um, state files to the Pulumi Cloud. And um, that's what we use here. And it's not really visible here, but uh, the whole company infrastructure, the whole company definition is inside a GitHub organization. So we're going to model our company in the GitHub orga, and this is um, in the below part. So how is the interaction going on? We have the dev team. The dev team heads over to Pulum, uh, to to the to backstage, choose from different software templates, choose what kind of um, infrastructure or what kind of service they want to create. Backstage runs. In, in our case, um, creates the infrastructure, uploads everything to uh, the Pulumi cloud, and feedbacks all the necessary information back to the development team, and creating everything in GitHub. So uh, it will be, for example, creating an infrastructure. You will get the Pulumi code automatically generated in your GitHub organization to then continue. So you could say, okay, from there, I'm going to use uh, GitHub workflows, for example, or I'm going to use a different way to do my CI part. Um, so this is just a reflection here. Or when you're going to use, for example, the Pulumi operator, you can just change the code and the op uh, Flux will detect any code changes and will then uh, execute the deployment and Pulumi operator will then execute the new um, the changes in the infrastructure. Okay, so let's open up our infrastructure. So here we have our um, our backstage instance. Let me just press reload. It's our uh, demo organization we we use all the time inside Pulumi. It's our Sapphire Archaeotech Emporium. And they created a, a, a software catalog. As you can see, there are already some components inside. So we have Flux is already installed on our GitOps system. The Pulumi operators installed. We have external secrets installed. And the AWS load balancer is everything on this GitOps infrastructure we just saw uh, in the beginning. So when we have a look into, uh, for example, Flux, we can see here is our Pulumi card and uh, the organization name and uh, the rep repository name, the runtime, which uh, everything gets executed. As you can see here, there are some already some runs here and we can see much more uh, runs here. So very interesting. And you can drill down to every uh, piece of them. Okay, that's so far the existing infrastructure. Um, we have here our uh, GitOps infrastructure. Oh, there is a YAML error um, that is not that important. We, we can check this later. So, and let's see, now it's still consistent here. And then we see also what I mentioned before with um, the resource. So we can see currently in the resource, uh, all the providers which are used and um, 
how many resources are created using this different provider. You can see AWS, for example, is 116. Okay, so let's create new infrastructure. So here we create, we see here different uh, templates. So we have, for example, a new EKS cluster. We can create a new Lambda function. We can create a microservice on Kubernetes. Um, we can create a static website and create also a virtual machine. So this is completely made up from me. So um, services I defined, which will be useful inside my company because we, we deploy plenty of stuff still on a virtual machine. So let's have a look into the code. How does the code look like? So. Let's pick this here. Uh, for example, the virtual machine. How does the code look like? So we drill down in our scaffold template. So as you can see, I subscribe. I, I told my backstage instance here using the backstage. Uh, so I use uh, this backstage um, resource called location, and I say to to my backstage instance that hey point to this specific repository, to this specific YAML file, and location will uh, consolidate everything. So I can say, OK, I define this is everything under my templates. So I named, for example, my location templates because this is everything template related. But you can use locations also for different backstage comp uh, resources, for backstage component resources, and so on and so on. So you can really create your, your service catalog. In my case, all the templates gets uh, generated here, uh, aggregated using the location. And now let's have a look um, with the first one with the simple static website. How does a sim simple static website look like? So as you can see, I have here the folder. I want to, to, to group everything. And inside the folder, I have a um, my, my template folder, this is completely made up for me. You can name it as you wish. That's not the, the thing. But everything underneath this template folder is already possible um, to, to template, to use a template engine. So um, everything, uh, it's similar to the cookie cutting process. Um, so Backstage has a template engine underneath. Before it was the cookie cutter, I think they changed it now to a similar approach. And you can see, it will generate a folder and with the using the name I, I collected from the user. And this is also for file names. So everything inside the template folder gets rendered and the magic happens here. So this is our first template, creating a simple static website, an S3 bucket. So um, all the meta information we just mentioned before, description and so on, make it easy for the for the users to understand what is behind this. Every um, template has an owner. So if I have, for example, a question, something is missing in my, my, my template, I can just uh, look up the owners here. In this case, it's a group, the infrastructure group, um, a specific type. So in my case, I gave it a serverless, for example, but you can also change the name. Um, there are also some well-known uh, types you can use. I, in my case, I said, okay, this is a, a template around a serverless uh, infrastructure. And now we come to the next step where we define the properties. So um, yeah, the, the parameters, sorry. So we, we, we can define now the different pages that the user will be guided through. So we have our... our First step, we, we collect some informations, uh, the name and the content. You will see this in, in action. And um, I, I collect the name, the content, because this is a funny service. We can just write the HTML content inside Backstage and will automatically generate a, an index HTML. Um, it's very important to say, okay, um, this will be hosted on a S3 bucket. So where is the S3 bucket located? In which um, region? I can define a default and so on. So collecting all the informations. We can also say, okay, which system belongs this? And who's the, who's the owner? 
So I can choose a owner. I can say, okay, this is the infrastructure team. This is the team. So I just went here on group. You could also go on user and define, okay, it has to be a specific user. Next point are the steps. And here where we execute all the, the, the scaffolder actions. So here in this case, we say, okay, fetch template is our first action. And as you can see with the URL, we say, go into the, te the template folder. You need to transform the template folder. As you can see, names are changeable. It doesn't need to be na named template. And now I can pass to the to templating process. I can pass all the specificas name, we just saw folders and file names are using the, the value uh, name, content, region, and of course here, uh, the stack. So which organization to use. Next point is then um, the publish step. So in my case, because this is here a, Git, uh, a Git, GitOps approach, I want to create a pull request because the, the, the ops team, for example, they need to, to, to look on it before they approve it. So we have um, a pull request flow going on. And I still have here um, our my, my, my spelling error inside. And the next point is then I just want to give feedback to the users to say, um, look at this pull request, for example. And there, when the pull request gets approved, um, you will get your your static website. So let's head back to our backstage instance. And now we can say, okay, let us use now the static website. So we say uh, CNCF webinar. And we can say hello. We want to deploy the development stack here in this case, and I'm going to choose an owner here. I say, okay, I'm part of the development team. So here you can see, I will just get some informations of the, the input I collected. And now I can say, okay, please create this for me. And as we can see, it starts. And when we go to the PR now, we see Backstage created a, a, a PR for us in the repository with the, with the infrastructure where our uh, GitOps operator is looking at. So the GitOps operator is uh, configured to just check here on this side. And we can now review everything. So let's imagine I'm not the, the platform team and I have to review this. I can say, okay, there's a component called CNCF webinar going to this uh, project that's completely fine. And this is the code that looks also very good for me. Here's some uh, the, the, the references to the credentials of AWS, very good. So I say approved, looks good to me. So, and now I can, squash this one okay and as we don't want to wait too long for our uh, flux operator to run we can also uh, say to the flux operator to say okay let's um, let's kick this off Okay. And we can see here the CNCF webinar is created. Currently, there is no uh, no reference because it's not executed on Pulumi side. Let's see on the Pulumi cloud if it's, yeah. We can see it's already executed and we should now get hopefully our S3 bucket generated. So it's going to create here the stack. Okay. We let this 
um, run through. Okay, that's fine. So it should be. Okay, and we have here now the link. And we see hello CNCF webinar. Very cool. So first story is completely done. So let's head over to the next one. Say, okay, we want to create a different one. So let's say, for example, we want to create a virtual machine. So let's look also into the virtual machine scaffolder code. So again, we go into the virtual machine also created from the platform team. Same pattern, we have the template definition, owner, and now additional informations we want to, to collect, owner, and so on. And here, we define now the Pulumi template again. This will be a second view. Uh, I can define some required properties, and then again, collecting the organization, which Pulumi organization to use, uh, the region. And now we come to some interesting part. Um, we can collect the instance type, some network cider. We can discuss, is this something I want to expose to the, the, to the team or is it the, the infrastructure? Is it the, the DevOps person inside a cross-functional team who maybe provisions this for um, everybody inside the team and he has a, um, more knowledge about uh, the whole networking subject? It's really... a uh, it really depends on the team structure. There are different programming language supported here. So we can say, okay, depending on the team and on the approved language inside an organization, um, we use an enumeration. And because to give it better names, uh, we can use the enum names and then override it. Otherwise you could just see TypeScript or YAML. Uh, you can make it a little bit more appealing for the users, stack selection. Um, GitHub repository location, so we can define where to, to save the code. And now we come to the next point with our Pulumi plugin. So here we're going to use uh, the, the Pulumi new command. And as you can see, collecting again the informations. So name, stack, organization we just saw. And here's the interesting part. We use a template here. So in this case, um, the VM. AWS template because we're going to deploy everything on AWS and we set some of the Pulumi configs. I just talked about the Pulumi architecture in the beginning. So we collect the region, the instance type and the VPC network cider. Um, wait a couple of seconds. Sometimes there's a race condition going on with the, with the transformation of the code. Um, and now we can execute the Pulumi up command and say, okay, we're not going to use Pulumi deployments. Again, setting the name, setting the repository URL, and here uh, the repository project path means um, where is the Pulumi code? Sometimes it could be that you put it into a subfolder because you want to run a mono repository in your site and say, okay, application code is in a folder, infrastructure code is in a folder, so you can now define where to put this. And we want to get out some of the outputs. We want to display to the, to the user some outputs, in this case, the URL of our service, which runs inside the virtual machine. We render again the template. We publish it now without a pull request. We publish everything, the whole Pulumi code in GitHub. Um, and then we display the informations. Okay, so let's create our virtual machine. So we say here, uh, SVM, no, let us call it CNCF. Webinar VM, webinar VM. The owner is this time again, the development team. So, um, I'm going to use my organization inside uh, Pulumi, as you can see the organization here. Oops. Uh, and uh, let's head back here. I can choose now the region. I take EU Central. I choose a medium one. This can stay as again, if there's no need on this one, you don't need to display this. 
I will use uh, Go, use the, the deployment environment to define it's a deployment, giving my um, organization, my GitHub organization, and let's give it a so test VM now. It's the name of the repository. We can see now all the information scattered again. Click on create and it should all up and running. So we head over to, uh, to the Pulumi Cloud. We can see now, hey, the CNCF webinar is here created. Okay. And it should also now, yeah, start to deploy everything. Oops. So we deploy, the VM gets created. This can take a couple of seconds. You can also see that it's um, what is going to do in the background. So it's going to create a, a VPC, a subnet, internet gateway. So there's much going on and our, our instance and same goes here. Okay, so now we publish this to GitHub. That's very good. And everything is deployed and registered. So we have now the feedback from Pulumi with the URL. I'm going to open this one. Let's maybe take a couple of seconds. Uh, we get the IP address. Uh, we can see the code in GitHub. You see everything is deployed here in our uh, GitHub repository. The code is now visible. I can now work on this and I can see also that some of the properties, the default properties is set. And let's see. And yeah, here is it. Hello world from Pulumi. The service is up and running. And we can also watch this here in our service catalog. We see that um, the card is displayed and we should also see for this component, the activity. And we can then jump from here back to the, the, the Pulumi cloud. Okay. So last thing before we uh, wrap up the session is give you um, um, the last thing. So now we want to maybe want to deploy something bigger to say, okay, so now we use some, um, some deployments, can we see something uh, more sophisticated maybe to say, okay, uh, what is with application code? So let us open this in a new tab. Again, uh, I think for this one, I need a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, I got it. So um, again, we have our template definition, nothing changed before. We collect some of the properties. Um, we configure the infrastructure. Um, we can now define, for example, additional functionalities here. I, I'm, I want to enable also a, a configuration scanner. And here I'm using, for example, Trivi. You can add additional tools and then you can extend your, your GitHub pipeline, for example. Choosing again a repository. What we do here now is I want to deploy this on a Kubernetes cluster. So here in this case, I say, okay, I want to deploy a Kubernetes cluster of the type uh, resource. Please show me everything of type resource. And um, then I'm fetching the information because I attached to this uh, Kubernetes cluster some informations about the Pulumi organization because we want to use stack references. We want to um, get the informations out. Then we render again the different templates. So we we, tem we render the flux template because we want to tell um, the flux operator, hey, here, um, 
look into this uh, Git repository. There you find the application code to deploy. And after this, uh, we also render the real application code of the uh, of the of the application. And uh, let's see. So this is one part, as you see again, um, using the, the the code for for Flux, uh, defining a Git repository, defining a customize to say, okay, um, please look inside this Git repository we just created, look in the customize folder, there you will find the, the Kubernetes manifest you need to deploy. So it's my assumption again. So when we look into the template folder of the code itself, you can see there's a customize folder and inside the customize folder, there's a simple um, Kubernetes deployment, a simple uh, service, um, yeah. And here we have uh, the, the, the application code, uh, a simple hello, hello Pulumi backstage world. Okay, so now we can choose this one, can give it a name. So we say uh, microservice, or let me say sales microservice. And we say the owner is the development team. So, and then we can say here again, as a cluster, we use the EKS cluster. Um, development, let's choose tree V as a scanner, that's fine. Um, I use again our demo repository. So, and we can so now create. Okay. And Perfect. So two things we created here. We created a pull request. You can look into this pull request for the GitHub's repository. So it created inside the Flux apps folder, it created the sales microservice application YAML with all the stuff here inside, which gets uh, executed from Flux. Um, so creating a Git repository, creating the namespace for the application. So I can approve this pull request. And when we take a look into um, the next part, we can also see the application code. So um, this is the application code. We created a microservice. Inside there's a Docker file. And we can see automatically that there is the, the GitHub workflow is creating a, a container. So a new uh, Docker container gets created. It will also create the customized file with the SHA ID. So this will also um, generate it and set inside um, the customization YAML. That's very interesting. So when we have a look, we should see now on commit on the customize. So here is our uh, microservice. That's, that's cool. Microservice is up and deployed. And uh, hope, yeah, we see that the customize also calculated from this container image and set it the new tag, the SHA number of the tag. So we have a 4E here. And if we had take a look here, we see, yeah, 4E. Um, that's the version we have. So everything is set up completely fine. Um, let's have a look into the, the tree V part, for example. So where is uh, login, build and push. Da, 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 da. Post build. Uh, where was the part we activated? Workflows build. Uh, that, that. Oh, I think he didn't collect it, the tree part. Okay, I did an error in the code. So let me have a look into the template definition. So why? The tree we did not render. Um, 
generate, generate. Okay, here I wrote Trivi. It should have printed the scanner. So let's have a look into this. How did I collect it? the Trivi variables? Scanner should be set. Template flux scanner should be set. Not sure why he did not generate it. The stuff. Hmm. Interesting. So let's see what did we collect it here. It's not it's not visible. What did I collect it? Um probably let's click on start over next. Okay, I selected Trivi. Not sure why it did not render the Trivi part prob oh, no. yeah, here is it. Uh, no, no, that's not that's no, here is it. Here's the Trivi stuff. Okay. He, he used the tree we config check, my fault. Um, so I it's part of the the, the action. So when we go to the tree v action in the generate, it's not an extra step. So maybe that should have been. So we have here the run check for misconfiguration and we can see some plenty of information here. Wow. <laughs> I should have fixed this. Okay, but at least it gives me feedback every time when I run now uh, my, my microservice, I get feedback um, that there is something to, to change. So I applied also a compliance development team gets uh, all the tools already installed and just don't need to care that, for example, a misconfiguration check will be happen. Everything is also registered here, as we can see. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I think the Lambda one, we can um, just quickly check here. Lambda. Webinar. So we will quickly skim over this and then we can also again set the properties. We set the language the stack and then lambda webinar create again create the pulumi new download the, the properties and let's see that um, it gets deployed so let's have a look into the Lambda deployment. So we see update number two is running and this should deploy now all the all the Lambda resources we need. So just give it a second and yeah. We can see the role is created and so on. So the Lambda function gets created and it should give us as output um, the URL of the Lambda. So let's see that this gets created. So the bucket gets created, an API gateway gets created. So everything, um, people really don't care and maybe, uh, yeah, are not able to do this in, in this quality. Like for example, the platform team would like to have it. So we defined this in our uh, code. We will have a look into the template again. So we see it's deployed. We get the URL also. So here is the URL for the Lambda serverless with Pulumi, we get the current time out. Perfect, it's working, bam. And we can see the code. So this is our Lambda function and so on. This is the website which gets the, the delivered with this stuff. Okay, now have a quick look into, um, yeah, the Lambda is also here. Perfect, fine. And 
let's have a look into the template definition. So again, as I mentioned before, kind of template. Let's have a look into the Lambda, into the code. And we see again, properties gets collected. Um, all the informations, region, language, and so on, where to save the stuff. And here we call again, Pulumi new. We use the template, the inbuilt template of serverless AWS. We set the region and then we execute Pulumi up. And as an output, we want the URL and the URL gets then displayed here. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. So let's close this and finish our slides. Okay. So follow up, wrap up. We just saw how to define backstage uh, templates. We created backstage templates. We registered the backstage templates to our backstage instance using the static uh, location the static uh, location configuration to uh, say, okay, here is our um, template. Um, we used the kind location to bundle several templates together to say, okay, these are all my paths. I want them all deployed. You could split them also. So there's also many, many possibilities. And yeah, the QR code for the Pulumi, co uh, for the Pulumi, Black, uh, for the Pulumi Backstage plugin is on the top. And some resources I found very useful for um, to dig into uh, the backstage in general and Pulumi Flux if you're interested into it. And again, the backstage plugin. Okay, so with this said, uh, thanks all for, for watching. If you're interested more into backstage, just let us know. I'm more than happy to show uh, additional uh, content around backstage and um, how to combine different um, deployments inside Pulumi or how to use, for example, the Kubernetes plugin inside backstage to see information of your Kubernetes deployment or multi-cluster deployments and so on and so on. So many, many interesting things. So um, hope you liked it. And I will say thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.